Hey everyone, welcome to part 30 of basic training where today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play TikTok clock on 150cc. This is probably one of the most cycle based tracks in the entire game, so we're going to focus the vast majority of our attention on how to deal with that aspect of the track, using examples from an old world record run and a couple of runs that I put together so that you can get a sense of how to think about the track, rather than just memorize a bunch of strats which may or may not be applicable depending on your skill. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive right on in. For TikTok Clock, we're going to first take a look at a relatively easy version of the run that uses our usual tried and true try hard build. Hold down the item button before the run begins so that you can use a mushroom as quickly as possible and then start a left drip. If your soft drifting is on point, you can build up a super mini turbo before you get to the ramp, but otherwise just build up a mini turbo and trick. Do a right drift around the first big clock face and prepare for cycle based hell. We're going to start by making our way around these two pendulums here. I probably don't have to tell you that running into them is particularly problematic, but what I can say is that if you have enough space to go around the left side of the first one, then do that. This is because you can do an extra right hop before tricking off the ramp and that'll give you better alignment around the following turn. Go to the right hand side of the second pendulum and then trick off the ramp, land in a right drift and build up a super mini turbo. Now as you might have guessed, these pendulums both swing back and forth, and whether you need to go to the left or the right of them is going to depend on your pace throughout the run. Fortunately though, this is pretty reactable and it shouldn't really give you that many problems. In either case, grab coins 3 and 4 and now comes the awful part. This next section consists of blue and red cogs that are rotating in opposite directions. The direction of the rotation does change over time, but don't really worry about that too much. You might notice that there's these little ramps with glowing arrows on them. The goal here is to trick off the ramps on all four cogs to maximize your speed. The rotation of the cogs makes this annoying enough, but it's even more painful on lap 1 because we also need to grab a couple of coins in this section. There's three pieces of advice that I have here. First of all, stay on the right hand side of the track on all three laps. This will not only help you with consistency, but also help you take a tighter line around the turn just after the cog section. The next piece of advice is to try and stay toward the center of the cogs as much as possible, and that's because anytime you're on a clockwise rotating cog, it's actually going against your direction of movement which is going to slow you down the closer you get to the edge. Now this isn't the optimal way of doing this section, but it is consistent. The third and final tip that I have is by far the most important, and that is to set up your line ahead of time based on what's happening on the cog in front of you. Alright, what? Here's what I mean. Before tricking off this first ramp, I'm noticing that the ramps on the blue cog are moving to the left. This one will be way too far to the left by the time I get to it, but this one should be right around the middle of the cog by the time I get to it, so I don't need to adjust my line a whole lot. The basic story here is that you want to look at the cog that's in front of the one that you're currently on and ignore any ramps that are right in front of you. Pay attention to the ones that are on the sides because those are going to be the ones that you're going to trick off of. So for example, when I land on the blue cog, I'm looking up here and noticing that these two ramps are probably not going to be in a good position to let me trick off them. So I'm going to just ignore them, drive forward and plan to trick off this one over here. Again on lap 1 you really need to be focusing more on getting the coins and just hoping that the ramps will be in a good spot for you. But on laps 2 and 3, it's a lot less problematic and you've got more freedom to improvise. Now that we're out of that little section of hell, the rest of the lap and the rest of the track really are pretty straightforward. Do a wide left drift, trick off the clock hand and build up another mini turbo to finish up the lap and then laps 2 and 3 play more or less the same as before. Except that on lap 2, the clock hand on the left side of the track is usually in a position to where you can drift off the orange boost pad, get a mini turbo and then trick off of it, and then just do another left drift when you're done. Now wouldn't it be nice if that were all that we had to talk about? Well, unfortunately we skipped about 90% of what makes this track so freaking difficult. See, if you play the track like we just talked about, then really all you have to worry about are the pendulums and the cogs, and both of those sections are pretty much 100% reactable. But there's a couple of shortcuts where how you take them and whether or not you're able to take them at all are entirely dependent on what kind of pace you're on. The first is at the very start of the lap over the big clock face. On lap 1, after tricking off the first ramp, you can start a wide left drift, then trick off the edge of the clock hand, land in a right drift, and trick off the edge of the mound in the middle. This sequence of tricks can be pretty annoying to learn, and in my experience if you only trick off the middle mound or get a lot of airtime off it, it's just about as fast as going around the shortcut like we did before, so it may or may not be worth it for you. Generally, like I said before, this shortcut's going to be unavailable on lap 2 so you can just go around like we did before and then trick off the clock hand. On lap 3, if you're quick enough, then the small clock hand will actually be relatively close to the middle of the track and you can mini turbo up it and then trick off the middle kind of like what we did on lap 1. However, if you're not on a good enough pace, then the clock hand will be angled too far to the right and you should just go around like we did before. 
because again, this shortcut doesn't really save that much time. Now the second and by far the much harder shortcut is at the end of the lap with the second clock face. Here's how it looks on lap one. Now I'm gonna level with you. It looks much harder than it is, but it's still really hard to do properly. After coming out of the cog section, drift around the two turns, hopping over the first corner if you're feeling brave, and then grab the two coins in a wide left drift just like before. But now, when you get to this little section just before the clock hand, tighten up your drift angle and then hop onto the clock hand. Hold right on the joystick after getting onto the clock hand so that you can make your way over to the right hand side of this little mound and then trick off it, just like the cut at the beginning of the lap. Then all you gotta do is land in a left drift and build up a little mini turbo through the gears and you're done. Now let's break this shortcut down a bit because that quick explanation really doesn't do justice to just how annoying this shortcut can be. See, if you look up the track, you can see that we're eventually gonna wanna go in between these two spinning gears here. So when we hop, we wanna make sure that we're moving towards the right edge of this mound so that we don't fall into the void on the left. The most common way this shortcut's gonna go wrong is that when you hop onto the clock hand, you're gonna angle yourself too far to the right, which is gonna cause you to either fall off the track entirely or else bonk the wall. Again, the goal is to move up the clock hands in such a way that when you actually trick, you're facing this little corner here so that you can drift around the turn. It's really annoying to get down, but I highly recommend learning it if you can because it does save a ton of time. Now the good news is that once you've made it past lap one, the laps two and three versions of the shortcut are much easier to get. Well, sort of. On lap two, you can basically just drift straight onto the clock hand, and the idea is still to trick off the right edge of the mound to get back onto the track, but now, if you accidentally go too far to the right, you'll just fall onto the other clock hand below, and you'll hop up onto the next part of the track. It's obviously gonna be a lot slower than not tricking, but it's a lot safer than the lap one version. One thing I should point out is that if you do wanna try and take the shortcut on lap two, you must make sure that the clock hand is angled at least slightly towards you, otherwise the cut basically becomes impossible. A good rule of thumb is that if you trick off the last cog any time after about a minute and three seconds on lap two, you're better off just going around the cut. On lap three, you can literally just drive onto the clock hand and trick off the mound directly. And even if you're much slower than I am, you should still be able to execute some version of this shortcut with relatively little pain. On lap three though, if you trick at a bad angle, it can actually slow you down quite a bit. So this is why I use my third mushroom here. Now let's talk world record strats. This is yet another course where the world record uses Baby Daisy in place of Waluigi. And so the main difference is that they make the course a million times harder than it already is by building up a ton of extra mini turbos. But aside from that, they also execute the last shortcut on all three laps way cleaner than I do, including some pretty sweet setups to trick off the cogs on all three laps. One thing I haven't spent a lot of time talking about is mushroom strats. There are literally no off-road shortcuts here, hence the use of the starting mushroom. For the other two mushrooms, I already mentioned that my last one is used on lap three so that I don't lose any speed. Now for your second one, you can just use it at the turn before the last shortcut, but that's it for the strats, so let's talk about the track a bit while checking out my current personal best. By the way, this was a really painful video to put together, so if it's helped you at all, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like and a comment to let me know, since this really does help the video get spread to other people looking to improve at the game. Now why exactly was this video so painful to put together, you ask? Well, because TikTok Clock is easily the most difficult course that I've worked on so far. Yes, Shy Guy Falls took me 11 hours to learn that one shortcut. And yes, Wario Stadium has a lot of really difficult to learn ramp strats, and is a pretty technical course, all things considered. But with Shy Guy Falls, the rest of the course is more or less free. And on Wario Stadium, everything's really consistent once you actually learn the strats. And so it's not super difficult to put a good run together once you figure it out. That is not the case for this course. TikTok Clock is the most cycle-based track in the entire game, and every section has moving pieces that you need to deal with that change positions on all three laps. And any one of these things can easily end your run. The pendulums and the cogs are mostly reactable, but the two shortcuts are kind of like the spike ball section on Bowser's Castle where you basically just need to learn where to go. But unlike Bowser's Castle, the cycle actually affects not one, but two shortcuts that you need to take. And it's not like the shortcuts themselves are very easy either. I'd wager that I make it successfully through lap one about 50% of the time, which, you know, is definitely low, but thank the good lord that laps two and three are way easier, at least on the pace that I usually find myself on. This means that if I can just survive lap one, usually the chances of me actually finishing a run are pretty good. Not that that means I'm gonna finish it quickly, mind you. To put it in perspective how difficult this track actually is, when I saw the current world record of 142.573 and the previous Waluigi world record of 143.6, 
just watching those runs, I was like, man, I will be happy if I can just get a sub 150. It took me so long to get a decent looking run together that I almost wasn't even planning on using my own personal best to talk about the track because of how bad my run looked. But I did spend a ton of time grinding this out and now I'm only four and a half seconds off the most recent Waluigi World Record, so I think I can safely say this is one of my stronger runs for sure. And that's everything you need to know to play TikTok Clock on 150cc. Again, if the video did help you out, then you can help me out by clicking on the like button down below. So what are your thoughts on the course, and what's your current personal best? Are you still struggling to figure out any of the strats? If you let me know down in the comment section below, I'd be more than happy to help you out, because I not only love hearing from you all, but I tend to be pretty responsive as well. Plus, you know, like I said before, liking and commenting is definitely the best way to help out the channel. Speaking of helping out, just want to give a shout out to the people who've become members of my YouTube channel. Click on the join button down below if you want early access to all my videos, and to have your username featured in the end credits. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next one.